Wondering how your bone density is these days? Common question. We're going to talk about all the different ways to measure your bone density and what's good about them, what's not good about them, why they matter. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Bradley. I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. And the reason we're interested in bone density is because we can use that to assess your risk of having a fracture. Because yeah, at the end of the, the day, your density is going up or down, it doesn't matter, then who cares? It's just, no. just the number or whatever, where you are on a chart. Yeah, but what matters is you're going to break your wrist, your hip, your spine, your shoulder, those kind of things are concerning and we can assess your risk of that and get some information about that risk from your bone density. So we're kind of go from like the worst way to measure all the way to what's considered nowadays the best way. Or the gold standard. The gold standard. This is kind of interesting to me. You know why? Sure. You might not know this. Hi. You remember when you used a res... Have osteoporosis? No. <laughs> I might, but I don't okay. know. I've never had a witness tested. But, you know, in residence, you have to do a residence day project. Yes. My residence day project was right around the time we went from... We had regular x-rays before we had digital x-rays. Oh, okay. But we had digitizers. So my project... I decided to digitize some x-rays yes. and then look at the pixels and the digitized x-ray and see if I could estimate bone density and? from those and I correlated it to DEXAs. Right. And it was actually a pretty good correlation uh, and I won first place. Mm. Actually, I didn't win first place because I was away during the presentation, but Marcus presented my project. Our friend Marcus Bischoff. Lucky Shout guy. out to Dr. Bischoff. And he and he got first place. That's, That's kind of how Marcus ago. is that he would end up getting a prize right? for a project. He wasn't so, yeah. That's, That's the way it went. <laughs> That's, that, that's kind of like my life. That's <laughs> awesome. Did all the work. That's didn't so awesome. get any glory. Okay. Yeah, so I've been interested in measuring bone density for a couple of decades. Okay, so let's talk about the first one, bioelectrical impedance scale. So I, they always end up on my phone somehow, like yeah. little ads. They're Get pushing the, hard on Yeah, this. and there's one particular, they should we name it? I feel like I shouldn't name it, but. Don't name it. No, don't, we're not gonna name it. So what these scales do is you stand on them and sometimes you hold like a weird little thing and mm -hmm. then it sends, it essentially bounces an electrical signal up and back through your body and that can assess the density of different tissues. So the research says that it's not bad at measuring the amount of fat that you have, yep. the amount of muscle you have mm -hmm. and maybe tracking those changes over time, but it's not reliable, has not been validated to talk about your bone density. No. No, and basically exploits the physical fact that different tissues conduct electricity differently. Right. And so then by measuring the differences in the conduction, they can estimate what percentage is fat, what percentage is muscle, how dense your bone is, supposedly. Yes. Supposedly. So, supposedly. So those scales may play a role, but probably not for bone density. Okay, forget it. Next okay. one, ultrasound, quantitative ultrasound measurements. Yeah. Ultrasounds where you take a sound frequency higher than you can hear and you bounce it off different tissues. Usually it's used for imaging, yeah. right? very commonly used for imaging. Uh, fetuses, we image fetuses with uh, ultrasound. Yeah. Soft tissues we often image with ultrasound. Please don't ever ultrasound a knee, but that seems to be done too. But ultrasound yeah. can be used to get an estimate of how dense your bone is. Yes, certainly not particularly reliable, no. definitely not the gold standard, but it's cheap, it's available, and sometimes that's why some of these tests yeah. are done. And they're safe, there's no radiation. When it's at that high frequency, can dogs hear that? I wonder uh, yeah. how high. Were you thinking people, about that? Yeah, because people can hear 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and yeah. dog is higher than that. Yeah. So I don't so maybe know. Maybe we don't do that test around your dog. Okay. okay, so number three is plain x-ray. So I know that sometimes as a surgeon, I'm like, Ooh, your bone quality doesn't look good. Or people ask me in the fracture clinic, particularly when I'm seeing them for a fracture, hey doc, how do my bones look? What studies have shown is that x-rays are reliable when you've already lost 30 to 50% of your bone density. So yeah. we would say, particularly for hip fractures, when you're looking at a hip, you can see like the thick outer part of the bone called your cortex. And as yeah. that decreases in size, as we age, then you can comment on the quality of the bone. But Certainly for the average person, x-ray is not a very reliable way no. to measure your bone density. And x-ray is difficult because when you're looking at an x-ray, you can't tell how much soft tissue is above that bone, right. and that'll influence how dark or how light the bone looks, which is what you're kind of also using to determine how much bone is there, right? Yeah. So if someone has a lot of soft tissue, they say, oh wow, they have really good bone density, but really that's the soft tissue that you're measuring the density of. Right. Okay, next is testing blood and urine markers for mm -hmm. different uh, activity levels of bone. So there's a couple different peptides. Um, CTX measures um, bone resorption. Sounds then, like a model of a car. Yeah, and then P1NP is used to measure um, bone 
formation. So these are, are better for assessing your response to treatment. So say you're on a, a bisphosphonate, they also can look at things like calcium and vitamin D and calcitonin. Um, but generally speaking, this is not a very reliable way or is not a reliable way to measure your bone density, but more measuring your bone's activity in response to maybe physical activity or particularly medication. Okay. Okay. What is a good accurate way is quantitative CT. So okay. a CT scan yes. is a computed tomography scan of your body using a lot of x-rays coming at you in different planes. Yep and reconstructing a three-dimensional image based on those x-rays. Okay. Um, so they can do a volumetric analysis of your bone and look at what's trabecular bone, what's not trabecular bone, how much trabecular bone you have, how much right. cortical bone you have, and you can get a good estimate there. The problem is it's a lot of radiation yeah. and it's fairly expensive. Yeah, not particularly accessible. We're learning more and more about the amount of radiation. Actually, we've reached out to one of our radiologists mm -hmm. to come on our show to talk about you know, the different amounts of radiation of the different tests and mm -hmm. maybe if we should use them slightly more responsibly. So quantitative CT, good for the structure and knowing more details about the bone, but probably not your go-to for the reasons that you just mentioned. Right. And so the last one is the DEXA, so the dual energy X-ray absorbitometry. Right, now when you just, when you said you look at a plain X-ray, yes. that's single energy X-ray absorbitometry, yes. which will never take off because that's SEXA. It's too provocative to be used as an acronym. <laughs> Brad, where are you going? I'm going to get my sex up. Yeah, maybe don't come home then. Maybe don't come home. Oh man, it's so hard sometimes. So That's early true though, morning. single energy. Yeah. Yes, so what's good about the DEXA is that it is a good way to assess your bone density as well as the changes over time. Yes. Um, it has a very low amount of radiation in the order of one tenth to one hundredth of mm -hmm. what a normal x-ray would be, which is the radiation that you get just from living on Earth for like yep. a couple of days, we all are exposed to radiation on low mm -hmm. levels on a daily basis. The trouble with DEX is it doesn't really assess the quality of the bone, no. but it is good because it can look at both your hip and your spine, mm -hmm. not just not just one area, like, like the ultrasound is if it's at your foot, you're really getting kind of foot and then extrapolating right. to other parts of your body or quantitative CT the same way. And the way that it was done is they compared uh, to a group population of 30-year-old healthy females. Yes. The thought was, and we're going to probably do a whole video just about DEXA. And that group this is was not very ethnically diverse either. Not very diverse. 30-year-old female, because that's when they estimated that um, bone density peaked. Mm -hmm. And then they had a, developed a normal distribution uh, through a bell curve. Yeah. And then they said if you were less than one standard deviation below that average, that was considered normal. Mm -hmm. One to 2.5 standard deviations was considered osteopenia, yeah. and greater than 2.5 is considered osteoporosis. And these are things that you've probably heard about, and we're gonna talk all about interpreting your DEXA scan in a separate video. But what, what, what is, what's, what's good about DEXA, what's bad about DEXA? I think what's, what's good about DEXA is that I think it's a nifty way to figure out what the bone density is. That's why you need the dual <laughs> did, energy. Did you just say nifty? Yeah, I mean, the, the reason you need the dual energies, right? Yes. You can't use a single energy other than because of the acronym, which I discussed previously. Yeah is because you need the dual energy to tease out what is soft tissue right. and what is bone. Okay. And it's actually, you can use a DEXA not just to look at bone density, you can look at it to look at fat composition, what percentage of fat you are, how much right. lean muscle mass you have. Because the um, bone, soft tissue, they absorb energy differently. Energy differently. Yes. Uh, so you can't, but if you just use one energy, you can't tell. But with two different energy levels, so like you're, you're using like 30 kilo electron volts and then 100 kilo electron volts, Bone absorbs energy differently at those different energies in a predictable ratio. Leave a comment if you like. Soft Dr. tissue Zalvo goes on these soft pit. tissues. I love it. The variation with the different energy, the absorption is not as much. So now you have a difference you can exploit to determine what's bone, what's muscle, what's soft tissue. It's awesome. So it's not great because it's based off not a good data set, a, a homogeneous data set of you know thirty-year-old females. Right. So that's not a great data set to apply to a bunch of people. Right, particularly older people who we really were worried about. Yeah. But but I understand kind of the thought being the like the bone loss. And, yeah. But the other thing we would say is that it's one thing to know that you have, say, a diagnosis of osteopenia or osteoporosis, but there are so many other uh, lifestyle, uh, genetic, historical factors that yes. predict your risk of fracture, which really is what we care about. Yeah. And that also is gonna 
a Lend into a future video where we talk yes. about a survey where you can actually establish your fracture risk based on a bunch of these things. And when they add DEXA to that, it becomes even more useful. Yeah, DEXA is just one other data point in the survey that they can use to estimate fractures. But DEXA is good for, I think it's commonly used for measuring response to treatment to look for a change. And the other big thing about DEXA is inter-machine variability. Right. Because it's heavily reliant on the algorithms they use to do all these calculations. Right. Although they're very rigorously calibrated. Right. right, but just for that one, you have to go to the same yeah, one, ideally. Yeah, yeah. so then, then it's a bit tricky when you go to it. So you should try and get your DEXA scan at the same place every time. That's right. what they used to say anyways. Okay, there you go. That's now, the other reason you don't want to be a SEXA, because then if someone who works on a DEXA, as a DEXA worker, you don't want the other acronym on your oh resume. God, so hard. Okay, now you know Now you know all the different ways that you can test your bone density, and you can know what the reliable ones are, the where you should look. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment about your experience with any of these tests. I bet just, I'd say like 90% of our viewers have had a DEXA scan. I would suspect that it's lower than that because I've looked at the demographic and we have yeah. some people in the 18 to 25 and they're really? probably not getting DEXA. But yeah. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.